Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment of our show brought to you by Madisonville Marine. G3 John Boats, G3 Talon Series, Suncatcher Pontoons from G3. Everybody from sportsmen to anglers to families with kids know that G3 produces some of the best boats in the world, and Madisonville Marine is your East Tennessee G3 headquarters. Stop in and see for yourself. Bob Hodge did. Bob, you're happy with your G3, aren't you? I'm more than happy. What is it? Do you got a thesaurus? Oh, you don't have. Yeah, you have to happy. find a word for how much happy you More are. Happy. Very good. Hey, <laughs> want to welcome in the next? I thought, no, I don't have the thesaurus. <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever listen to this show? <laughs> I want to welcome in the next two members of our panel right down there. Former Vol quarterbacks, Bobby Scott, the old number ten, and Sterling Hinton, the old number sixteen. Good to have you guys with us. I, I can't imagine two guys that enjoyed that win any more than the two of you. I want to start. This is our hot read segment, so we got a couple of, of questions here. First one, going to be kind of quick on this one. Uh, defensive coordinator John Jancic has gotten some praise all year, and deservedly so. His defense with so many young guys really played well. Mike Bajakin, on the other hand, you know, like all offensive coordinators, unpopular. <laughs> There's no such <laughs> thing. Everybody thinks they can call plays. Um, but in hindsight, he had a really good game plan against Iowa. I mean, he, he pushed 90% of the right buttons against Iowa, including the, the halfback pass from Marlon Lane. Uh, but also, now you look back, you made it to seven and six, and it may be tougher on offense than on defense. On offense, you got all new offensive line. On defense, you can take young guys and say, just go get them, go get the ball. Now, I know it's, that's oversimplifying it, but you get the point. Offense, a little bit different. You had to build a whole new offensive line, had to change quarterbacks, beat up wide receivers all year, only one really healthy, really top-notch running back all year. Have you changed your, has it changed the way you look back at, at Mike Bajakian at all? When you when you consider all those things, or no? Not really for me. I uh, you know I think the the key change was of course Dobbs coming in at quarterback. Uh, we said you know early on in the season, if you're going to run the type of offense we run, that the quarterback has got to take the ball sometime and just to keep everybody honest. And I think uh, when when they put Dobbs in there. Uh, you saw the very first ball game. He ran the ball three or four times for uh, a number of yards, made them respect him, and that opened up lanes for, uh, for, uh, for the running backs. And, uh, you know, I think, I think Bajakian uh, deserves a lot of credit for, uh, I'm sure it was a team coach thing, uh, putting, uh, you know, making yeah, the certainly. change in everything. But, uh, but I think he did a great job in, uh, in, in coaching Dobbs up. Go ahead, one of you. Uh, well, I, I, Just look I, at I, each I, other. What I want to say is, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, Coach Jake and I thought he was doing a great job. Well, yeah, actually. I mean, you got to think some of those plays he dialed up. We had a couple of drop balls that we get that third down and we get to a first down. Um, also, the unsung hero of the offense is senior Marlon Lane. I mean, you had to see the type. This guy lost his position to a freshman. And the had to stay in that level of leadership and, 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 and set an example in teaching that he did on practice, whoa. And so you got a guy like Marlon Lane, you got a couple of seniors around the program that was supporting Coach Bajakian's decisions and helping the young guys come along, that's Tennessee football. I still think there's, some, there's definitely some criticism there just because oh, I, yeah. think, I think there was certain points in the season where you were doing stuff that you were staying with the system and not looking at your personnel and what you had and what was going on. Mm -hmm. And there were some obvious areas that if you'd been a little outside the box and saying our system isn't handling this, right. even though that's what we want to be, we need to adapt and change a little bit earlier. I think they got tunnel sighted in this is how we run the system and didn't look at who their personnel was on the field at the time and said, what can they do? What do we need yeah. to do? I think there is some criticism that can go there uh, throughout the year. I agree. I just think he took a little – in hindsight, overall, I think offensive coordinators always take too much heat. Again, I think everybody, media fans, thinks they can call plays. Well, run. Well, yeah, which of the 500 run plays do you use? That's when you melt. But uh, I think there are areas of concern, but I think he took too much heat this year. And I think in hindsight, you look at it, it's like, he had to have done a pretty good job with an extremely green team. And you also go back and you look at the Florida game, and we're going to have to move on here, but I'll start with you on the next question. But the Florida game, um, they had dialed up a, uh, I think it was a third down play. Bob, you and I went back and looked at it. You had Pig Howard across the middle for a game-winning, what would have been a game-winning touchdown. The quarterback didn't see him, went somewhere else, mm -hmm. and the receiver dropped the ball. You didn't pick up the first down. If you throw that and you get the touchdown, now you're talking about an eight-win team. 
this year. And everybody's got a different view. So that goes back to Sterling's point a little bit. Some of it's on execution as well. I just think Bajakian took a lot of heat this year, and I don't think it was all deserved. But next question. Let me get – I've been surprised. Maybe you guys aren't. Maybe you hadn't heard it. You? I've been surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I've been surprised that there's been as much griping as there has been about the last two. Tennessee was up 45-14. Then in the last five minutes, they, their backups come in. They give up 140 yards and two touchdowns. So it's 45-28. I've been surprised by the number of gripes based on garbage time points allowed. I look at that and think, how in the world? Can anybody be so spoiled that they're not just smiling from ear to ear at that point? Am I wrong? No, let's not use the word spoiled. Let's go with stupid. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, the, 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 like the, the, <laughs> game, the game's over. And, I mean, I've got friends of mine who are texting me, oh, my gosh, they're falling apart. They could have fallen totally apart. There was no way for Iowa to win the game. Tennessee's in celebration mode. The starters are out. I wouldn't be surprised if some players weren't having a drink on the sideline. <laughs> Has anybody here got a story to tell? <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, no, I was, I was surprised at the criticism. That's what surprised me was the criticism yeah. of Tennessee's players Will, and coaches. Will, did you ever let off the gas a little bit in a game like that? If I'm up 35-7 to 7 in the first half, I know coaches are telling me, you're going to go out for one series and you're done for the game. I mean, so of course we're coasting at that point in time. And you're it's sitting over. over. You are. You're sitting over there on the sideline, leaning back, enjoying it. I mean, you know, heck, it's great to be in a position like that. And what's crazy is people are forgetting some of those second teamers that were playing during that, that mop up time, they were really third teamers against their first team. Right. So I always get the starters so in. Look at that thing, man. Hey, we won. It was a great Tennessee victory. Don't, don't discount that. I, I agree with you. And the thing is, you know, the, uh, it doesn't take a genius to figure this out. This is what I put up in the early third quarter on Twitter. It's going to be hard to fight complacency, natural, the rest of the way. They're going to be putting in the backups, get ready for points. Uh, going to be tough for Tennessee not to let off the gas at this point. Clearly, from a lot of your emails, I'm an idiot. And <laughs> even I saw what was coming. So come on. All right. When we come back, um, we're going to take a look at game balls. Who players or coaches from 2014 deserves game balls? And remember, we're going to look ahead to 2015 coming up. Going back on the Sports Source. <laughs> 